Let me tell you the salient features that should be done on Eid al-Adha. The day of Eid it should be a day of celebration. Be happy, be cheerful. It's the day of celebration. We should be able to sacrifice anything in this world for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eid al-Adha, the day of sacrifice. We, if we have the means, we sacrifice an animal. It is recommended that all the women, including the children, including the menstruating women, should go for the Eid Salah, even if they don't have to offer Salah. Sunnah is to wish Taqabbal Allah min nao minkum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eid al-Adha, or Yawm al-Nahar, that is the day of sacrifice. The Eid of sacrifice, or the day of sacrifice. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked Prophet Ibrahim that what do you love the most in this world? But naturally after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, my son, Ismail alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests Ibrahim alayhi salam that can you sacrifice him for me? And Ibrahim alayhi salam goes and tells his son Ismail alayhi salam and he said, don't worry father, you will find me steadfast. And on the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's about to sacrifice his son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces it with a sacrifice animal. And this is what we remember every year in Eid al-Adha, that we should be able to sacrifice anything in this world for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And during Yohamun al-Nahar, the day of sacrifice, and Eid al-Adha, the day of sacrifice, we, if we have the means, we sacrifice an animal. For one person it is a goat, or if you want to do a big animal like a cow or a camel, it can be for, for seven people. And it's mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 37. It is not their meat or blood that reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is a party which reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't sacrifice so that the blood and the meat reaches to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we do it for our taqwa. Our party should reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what do we do with the sacrifice? When we sacrifice the animal, we distribute it amongst the poor people, amongst the friends among the relatives and keep some for ourselves. Normally it is recommended that that minimum one third should be given to the poor people, one third to the family and friends and the maximum you can keep yourself is one third. This is a practice. Let me tell you the salient features that should be done on Eid al-Adha or Yawm al-Nahar. Number one, that have a bath early in the morning. Number two, put perfume on yourself. It's a sunnah. Number three is that wear the best of your clothes. Number four, say the takbirat. Number five, preferable, do not eat anything before the Eid prayer. Number six, go to pray early. Number seven, that it is recommended that all the women, including the children, including the menstruating women, should go for the Eid Salah, even if they don't have to offer Salah or they don't have to go to the Musallah. And when you come back from Eid prayer, see to it that you take another route, not the same route in which you went for the Eid Salah. And preferable to pay Eid Salah in a Musallah, in an open ground, which is called as Eidka. Now what is the reason that our beloved Prophet Muhammad recommended that all the women and the children, including the menstruating women, should go for the Eid Salah even if they don't have to offer salah, even, even if they don't have to go and pray. What is the reason? Why did the Prophet say that you go from one route and when you come back, take the other route? Why did he say that pray in a large place, Eidgah? For all this, we come to know that the reason is so that it boosts the morale of the Muslims. Normally, we Muslims offer five times salah congregation in the mosque. Once a week in Jummah, we have a bigger congregation. We pray in the Jummah mosque. The congregation is multiple times bigger than what congregation you have during the five times salah. And twice in the year, during the Eidain, the Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, the Prophet recommended that you pray in an open ground known as the Eidga. Why? So that a larger number can gather. Imagine if you are living in a village and during the Eid Salah you come to know there are 30,000 Muslims, there are 40,000 Muslims. The morale of the Muslims is boosted. And if you are living in an area which has got non-Muslims also, the non-Muslim will think 10 times before interfering with the Muslim. Oh, the Muslims are 30,000 in number, 40,000 in number. Imagine if you are living in a big city and if you pray in one Eidgah in which 100,000 gather 
or a few hundred thousand gather, imagine the scenario. It will boost up the morale of the Muslims. And at the same time, would give a non-Muslim a thought that they better not interfere with the Muslims. This is the psychology, what is the reason that the beloved Prophet ﷺ even told the women and the children to go, even the women if they're menstruating. When you go through one way, come through the other way, not the same way. Why? So that the other people in the other locality of that village, or of that town, or that city know, ah, the Muslims are going in large numbers. If you go through route A, come back through route B. So that the people of route A also come to know, the people of route B also come to know that Muslims are in large number. The next important point, when you come back, if you have the means, you sacrifice an animal. If Allah has given you the means. Later on, you go and meet your family friends. It's the day of celebration. And when you meet, the greeting is, Taqabbal Allah min no minkum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the good deeds from us and from you. Normally, in India, Pakistan, they say Eid Mubarak or other words. The Sunnah is to wish Taqabbal Allah min no minkum. O Allah, accept the good deeds from us and from you. You can say Eid Mubarak. It is Mubah. But the right thing is as the Prophet and the Sabahs wished each other. And the day of Eid, this should be a day of celebration. Be happy, be cheerful. Let me tell you the important points of the Eid Salah before I end this talk. There are 14 important points of Eid Salah. Number one, the Eid Salah is further for every Muslim who is an adult and who is sane, male or female. Number two, it is offered between the time after the Fajr Salah and before the Dhuhr Salah. But the earlier you offer, the better it is. Number three, it should be offered in an open ground, a Musalla, also known as the Eidgah. Number four, that if Eid falls on a Juma, then praying Juma on that day is not fard. But it is Sunnah, it is recommended. If you pray, it is good. But if you want, you can abstain from Fi Juma Salah. At that time, you should pray only the Zohar Salah. Next point, number five, is that there is no Adhan or no Akama before the Eid Salah. Number six, there is no Sunnah before the Eid Salah or after the Eid Salah. Number seven, the Eid Salah is of two rakah. Number eight, there are six extra takbirat in the first rakat before Surah Fatiha, besides the takbirat ihram. Along with that, there are total seven takbirat in the first rakat before Surah Fatiha. In the second rakat, after you get up from the sujood in the starting of the second rakat, after seeing the takbir, there are five additional takbirat before the Surah Fatiha in the second rakat. Ninth point is that it is sunnah to recite Surah Allah in the first rakat and Surah Kasha in the second rakat. The tenth point is it is also a sunnah you can recite Surah Qaf in the first rakat and Surah Kamar in the second rakat. The twelfth is that after the each salah there is a khutbah. The thirteenth point is it is recommended that you hear the khutbah of the Imam after the Salah. But it is not a fard. It is highly recommended. And the 14th point is when you go for Salah in form one route, see to it while coming back, you take the other route. These were the 14 salient points of the Eid Salah. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you.